There we go. All right, so the next session we have Brandon O'Leary, who's a new product manager for uh, for the Verify team. Uh, I mean, Brandon, I think you're a longtime veteran of, of GitLab, but you're uh, recently uh, uh, joined the product team. Uh, so I'll let you uh, introduce yourself, and uh, I think you'll probably have something you want to share on your screen, and I'll let you kick things off. Right. Great. Thanks, Ray. Okay. Appreciate yeah. it. Uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and uh, share my screen. I just put a couple of slides together, hopefully not kill everybody with slides, but helps helps give context to everything uh, that I wanted to talk about today. Uh, so hopefully you can see those now, yeah? Yep, yep. Great, great. Yeah, so uh, like Ray said, we're gonna talk about the verify stage of the uh, DevOps lifecycle. And just to kind of introduce myself, uh, again, my name is Brian O'Leary. Uh, as you mentioned, I've been in GitLab for a long time, which is <laughs> October 2017, uh, but that's pretty long uh, in GitLab years. Uh, and recently made a transition to take over uh, as product manager for Verify. Um, and so what is Verify? I was going to kind of talk about that first. Um, so if you're not familiar with uh, how we look at the DevOps lifecycle, this is kind of the way we think about it. Um, and we think about it in these DevOps stages uh, that I'm sure uh, you've heard about and, and maybe heard Ray and others in the community talking about. And so my focus is really on the on the verify section uh, of this DevOps lifecycle, right? So, uh, you know, after we're kind of done creating, uh, once we've uh, uploaded, uh, you know, our code and, and got it into GitLab, uh, then we're going to verify that that code is is ready to go. And so, I also put, I, I typically put at the end of my title parentheses CI, right? So this is all of the the CI portions of GitLab for sure. Uh, but then also covers um, all of the testing. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, so just kind of how I think about Verify um, is kind of in these these three North Stars. Um, so one is it's the gateway to operations. So what I mean by that is it's the first stage on the ops side of the house that uh, as we've defined, again, the DevOps lifecycle. Um, but an argument can be made to, for putting it in dev as well, right? So I think that kind of shows how the bridge between development and operations is the verify stage. Uh, and we take that uh, responsibility pretty seriously. Uh, we want to be able to kind of help bridge that gap uh, for, for folks that are either new uh, to the concept of DevOps or folks that have been doing, you know, DevOps for years and years, but haven't necessarily found uh, the way to really optimize uh, all of that verify step. Uh, speed and scalability is another North Star. And so what this is, is kind of from the ground up, GitLab CI, even before it was integrated as part of GitLab, uh, leading us to the single application uh, for the entire life cycle, uh, was, was built for speed. And so it was built on Docker uh, natively, uh, and that has enabled speed, not only for developers to be able to quickly add tooling and, and control their builds, but also for um, you know, just the overall speed of, of getting things done. And, and so th this is something we think about a lot whenever we're, we're addressing a problem. And then last, um, you know, GitLab as a product whole talks about lovable solutions, uh, you know, minimal lovable product. Uh, that's especially important for us in Verify because we're talking about some very complex problems. Again, um, you know, a demo of, of CI is great, but our customers are really, actually our, our customers and users are really actually um, solving very hard complex problems and we want to make that easy uh, and lovable. So uh, as you may know each part of uh, the DevOps lifecycle that GitLab has we break down into categories uh, and so these are the categories that we've uh, chosen currently for Verify um, and so of course like I said continuous integration is obvious uh, that's a big chunk of what we do and a big chunk of where we've built the product uh, to begin with. Um, code quality and performance testing are, are things that we've added uh, semi-recently, performance testing in 2018. Uh, and then we're trying, uh, for 2019, the vision is to add uh, kind of built-in capabilities for system usability, accessibility, and compatibility testing. Uh, and so when we say those things, it's an interesting way of dividing testing. Uh, the way we think about it is system testing is you know, not just testing maybe this project or 
you know, this particular thing that we're running Verify for, but the system as a whole. So if you have a microservices um, uh, architecture, we want to test the overall system. But that doesn't just apply to microservices. It, we want it to apply to anything that is, you know, a system, uh, a complex system that needs to be tested. Um, so if you think about it as like, the project testing is unit testing and the system testing is integrated testing. Um, maybe as an analogy, that makes sense. Uh, usability and accessibility go hand in hand. Um, where we're talking about usability, we wanna be able to uh, bring tools to product managers, to designers, to UX teams, uh, to really understand uh, how a change is gonna impact the usability of an application. Uh, accessibility uh, is, you know, something that's very important to us as a GitLab. We want GitLab to be accessible to the world. Uh, and we also want to build, you know, first class tools to help everyone make their, their, their uh, applications accessible to the world. And then lastly, compatibility testing um, can be thought of, again, as a number of different ways, depending on the use case. It could be, we want to make sure that this is compatible with uh, every cloud platform, right? So, the Kubernetes group uses GitLab to test against um, all the various uh, EKS, um, AKS, uh, Google Cloud, GKE, all of the various uh, Kubernetes installations out there. Um, but this also could be for users that are on embedded hardware and have multiple hardware devices that they have to deploy to. Um, so that this compatibility testing is, is kind of a broad category. We've, we're still looking at, you know, what's the minimal viable change that's gonna really help um, meet this vision in 2019. Um, when we're talking about the community, I think it's really important to, to point out that Verify in its current form really came from a community contribution. Uh, so just kind of like the brief history, and I wasn't a GitLabber for this history, so probably uh, I'll get some of it wrong, but uh, DZ, our uh, co-founder and, and the original writer of GitLab, was getting tired of building GitLab, as we all do as developers. Uh, and so he wrote a little uh, GitLab CI is a separate program. Um, and there were a lot of community contributions coming into that. Uh, some of the biggest uh, coming from uh, an individual named Camille. Um, and Camille now is a, um, is a fellow engineer uh, for Verify, right? Uh, so he was originally a community contrib contributor, contributed a lot to kind of the, the vision and, and the, uh, what Verify was going to become. Um, you know, con he convinced uh, DZ and Sid to integrate GitLab CI into GitLab itself. Um, and so that again was like, that helped set the vision to where we are today of, hey, let's have a single application for the entire DevOps lifecycle instead of having many uh, disparate applications. We, we originally had GitLab CI as a separate application. And um, when Camille first said to, to DZ and, and Sid, hey, we should integrate it. Uh, they said, no, you're crazy. That's the wrong strategy. And look where we are now. <laughs> so that, uh, that's, that's kind of a cool bit of history to verify that I think is definitely worth pointing out. Um, and then lastly, I just kind of want to talk about some like more recent community contributions, right? I mean, that wasn't that long ago that Camille joined us, but um, there have been some really cool things done recently. Um, and I've kind of categorized them, right? Uh, there's lots of things that the community can do to help us like realize this vision for Verify. Um, so it could be as simple as like, this is a one line change, but, but made a huge difference for people with .NET. Uh, in our .NET template, we didn't have it set to always upload the artifact. So when the test failed, the test artifact didn't get uploaded, which is kind of silly, right? <laughs> That's almost when you want the test artifact the most. Uh, so we had somebody in the community contribute that fix. Um, and then there's also more complex things like, you know, complex front end items that really help um, sorting runners, you know, for a user that has a large number of runners, the admin runner page can be massive and hard to understand. Um, and so even just a simple iteration that actually took a lot of work, uh, but is simple once it's done of, hey, let's sort by last contact date on the runners page is, is really helpful. Um, and then, you know, uh, even complex backend items. So this is a really cool one uh, that shipped recently. Uh, we've had for a while the ability for you to skip the CI portion uh, when you push up to GitLab by including a little tag in your commit message. But that's, you know, kind of sloppy and, and a lot of folks don't want to, you know, they might have specific guidelines around their commit messages that don't allow for that. 
Well, recently GitLab added support for Git 2.0, um, and that comes with push options. Uh, and so a community contribu contributor um, added a push option for CI.skip that then allows us to, you know, keep your commit messages the same, same, but still uh, skip CI when, when pushing to GitLab. So that's a really cool uh, addition. Uh, again, seems subtle. Um, it was a big change. I got a screenshot of the, the MR here with, you know, 58 discussions and uh, discussion items and, and lots of feedback. Um, so that was great. And then, honestly, um, you know, even for those that don't feel like they can contribute that kind of complex code, I think that um, documentation updates are my favorite. I feel like our documentation serves as great reference documentation, but maybe not the best uh, onboarding and tutorial documentation. Um, and so, you know, I've, I've pointed out here that we've got a bunch of merge requests that came in from the community to our docs, but also we have 122 open issues around documentation. Uh, if you need somewhere to get started and you don't want to dive into Ruby or, or Go, um, that, that would be a great place to get started. Uh, and then lastly, um, uh, Ray had asked about, you know, hey, what, what's the one thing you would care about the most, Brendan, if, if we were doing a hackathon? Um, and so I've got this issue here, and it's linked in the hackathon page as well, um, which is step folding um, in CI. Um, so today we've got the log output uh, in CI, which is great and really useful. Uh, but it would also be useful to be able to fold those steps so that you can see, you know, what what are the script steps, and then I can fold and unfold um, the details and the log from each of those steps. Uh, this is something that is actually already enabled by the back end. Um, in fact, in this issue, you can see somebody has a little bit of a, a hack, some like just JavaScript to run on the front end that then folds the steps similar to as designed. Um, so I'm hoping that this is a, uh, like a, a, a lower bar uh, for someone that might want to just get started, but has a huge impact. Um, and again, that issue, if you go to it, has a lot of details, has this design, um, has details on the, the CSS and JavaScript that would need to be done uh, to make this a reality. Um, and then I've also got a link here to all of our verify issues that are accepting merge requests, which there's a lot of. Uh, so if this issue doesn't uh, strike your fancy, uh, feel free to visit that link. Um, and then also just lastly, I'd say, you know, feel free to ask hard questions. Uh, I've got my Twitter and my GitLab handle here. Um, we've got our direction page, of course, that's public like all of our stages. Um, and then this uh, Verify Hackathon link is just to this presentation. If you want to get to any of the links in it, you can can visit that. Cool. Thanks. Thanks, Brendan. Yeah, I was just looking at the issue that we highlighted for the hackathon. It looks like uh, like one of the community members volunteered for it, Matthias, and uh, I think one awesome. of our core team members helped us sign it as well to Matthias. So, uh, but I mean, like you noted, Brandon, there are plenty of other issues, including documentations that people should be able to search through. Um, so there's probably no shortage of things. Uh, if people are interested in, in any of the verify areas that people get tackled, but uh, you're also showing it as well. But, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. 806 open issues, right? Uh, that we're, we're looking at merge requests for. So right. like you said, there's no shortage, uh, shortage uh, of issues. And then you can filter those even more by these other labels like continuous integration is a label that would you know, find just the things about CI. Um, right. This includes, because I'm, I'm searching here GitLab org, so it includes things for the runner, which is in Go. Um, and things for GitLab, you know, Ruby View, all that, all that stuff that's great in the GitLab stack. So um, you, you could then narrow it down by, by project too. Um, you know, Verify is a little, not unique, but Verify kind of technically splits into the run, GitLab runner, which like I said, is in, in Go and, and multi-platform, and then all the pieces of GitLab, of course, that, that contribute to Verify. Right. And I'm sure if people have any questions or interested in working on any of these issues, I can just mention you on, on the issue and then they can go from there. But. Yes. Yes. I, I try to run my life through my GitLab to do's. Um, 36 is actually a decent number, if you can believe it, <laughs> that I've got right now. But yeah, please just at mention Brendan, B-R-E-N-D-A-N. And I'd love to, to chat about it or help out however I can. Cool. Okay, we have uh, a few other participants on the call. I don't know if the people have any questions or comments that they want to raise.
Uh, Brendan, perhaps a quick question. Um, what would your uh, recommendation be for community members who uh, might have uh, an idea uh, to implement uh, to implement a feature um, that they uh, would like to see in GitLab, but they might not be sure whether this fits into the direction uh, of GitLab itself. Uh, I know sometimes we recommend to find a, a work in, pro uh, in, in, in progress issue, but um, yeah, how do you generally manage this on, uh, on, uh, on Verify? Sure, that's a, that's a great question. Um, I would say yes, first, like, like we saw, there's lots of open issues. So I'd say take one stab, one pass through searching for if that issue exists already. Um, but also don't worry about being the expert on that. That's what like I'm here for and, and we're here for. Um, so if you don't find an issue that kind of matches your idea, just open it. And um, if you don't ping me, Mark Fletcher who helps us with our issues will. So feel free to ping me. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, I, I also ver monitor, in addition to my to-dos, I monitor the, the whole Verify label incoming um, and, and try to triage that on a regular basis. Um, and so, and then I'll just say that I'm gonna be really transparent, right? I, I take after our, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm gonna tell you if I think it doesn't fit in the direction and we can have a whole discussion on that issue uh, and feel free to disagree with me. Uh, I am not the only person that understands uh, what Verify needs to be. In fact, I probably know uh, less than most, right? Like I think the real world cases, real world use cases that we get through issues are kind of the most critical to helping us change the direction and make sure it, it fits with what users are, are wanting. So I'd really encourage that. Disagree. I said at the end of the presentation, right? Ask me hard questions. Feel free to, feel free to disagree with me constantly. My, my wife will support you in that too. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm, cool. s I'm seeing some things on the GitLab community channel on GitHub. I'm not sure if it's related to that. Um, no, I think I think it's not. Um, I actually have a couple of questions um, that are more uh, focused, perhaps. Um, I've been working with a couple of uh, open source projects uh, um, who are um, either in the process of uh, or relating, uh, migrating to GitLab. And um, I've had a couple of recurrent questions um, related to Verify. One of them was um, having um, um, Runner uh, being able to um, um, to to run on ARM64, and uh, the other one was uh, the Docker executor for uh, for Windows. Um, I'm not sure if it, they fit into the uh, current direction or if it's something that might go into the uh, category of compatibility testing. Perhaps if you could uh, tell us a few words on, on these two topics, Brandon. Sure, um, that would be, yeah. So yes, that fits in with the vision, I think is the most important thing. Um, if you look at our um, vision page, there's actually a lot of upcoming updates uh, for Windows specifically. Um, that's a focus right now. So today, um, the runner does run on Windows. Um, but not in the same way, not, not, not with the same first class support that is, that exists for Linux. It's just, this is not the same. Right. And what that basically falls into today is you have to use a shell runner, um, which then of course has some limitations, um, in terms of like, that doesn't really fit in the GitLab model of, you know, we love Docker. We love the idea of ephemeral Docker containers for your builds. So the, the next thing that we're focused on for actually 11.9 and 11.10 is making Windows container executors um, a, a first class citizen within the runner. Um, and so you can see there's a lot of issues. If you go to the, the vision page um, and the Windows, con Windows container executor, there's actually an epic that has what's included in the MVC and um, what's included, what's not. I can, I can walk you through real quick. Um, so I'm just on the um, verify page. I know that Windows Container Executor is listed for 11.9. Um, and if I go to that, we should have the epics that are related. I'm just letting it load for me here. Um, yeah, so this is part of the MVC uh, container, Windows Container Epic. Um, and so it talked about what's in and what's out um, of, of kind of the epic um, and, and where those things are shipping. So we've actually already shipped some pieces of that. Um, the biggest, the biggest hurdle we're having right now, not hurdle, but the thing that's taking the longest right now is just shipping helper images, right? So we have a helper image that 
downloads next to your image. Um, and we have to have an individual one of those for each version of Windows because of the way Windows containers work. Um, so that's just a heavier lift than we originally expected. Um, but we're, we're really focused on this. Um, it's, it's like kind of the number one thing for the runner team right now. Um, ARM 64, I don't know off the top of my head. Um, I thought we had support for it. <laughs> um, so if we, if we don't, um, we should. And I'm going to look into that um, for sure. Um, because again, the, the, the point of runner being in Go theoretically and, and in reality is we want it to be able to run everywhere. Um, so like down to this, the point where we've got um, users and customers that are interested in running it on um, ZOS from IBM mainframes. And we're working with IBM's engineering team on how that can, can work because ZOS supports Go now. So I would say ARM64, if we don't support it today, I, I'm going to go look after this and I definitely want to support it. <laughs> there's a there's an existing merge um, merge request, and I'll ping you on it because I think when when I first heard this discussion or when I first got involved, you weren't yet uh, managing uh, on um, the verify product. Um, so I'll make sure that there's a ping um, that there are ping you on that. Um, essentially, there's a there's a community member who created a, a branch, um, and he's been. I mean, essentially, um, there is a way to do it, but. Uh, these are only uh, workarounds right now. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I'd like to make that not, uh, you know, figure out with the engineering team how we can make that work um, awesome. without workarounds for sure. And then, I mean, I, I think just generally, um, I mean, that, that's platform support, but on the executor support side, um, there is, I think, I don't know if it's an existing contribution or one we're working with folks on the idea of a generic executor. Um, I think that would be really great for the runner because I think a lot of the, a lot of ideas are like, Hey, we want this kind of executor. Hey, we want that kind of executor. And if we accept every executor coming in the door, we then have to accept support for every executor. Um, and so I would like to see a generic executor that we can support and then the community can extend if they've got, you know, a bespoke system that we don't, you know, have in our testing stack and have the ability to support uh, directly today. Um, and so that's uh, another thing that you could look for um, on the community side. Awesome. Thanks, Sam. All right. Any other questions or comments? We have about a few minutes left. But if not, I'm happy to end this early. Brandon, thank you for your time, uh, not only for leading the session, but, uh, but putting the materials together and also getting the links out too. So we'll get this posted on our uh, YouTube playlist uh, in hopefully in the next couple of hours. Awesome. Thanks. Cool. Thanks for putting this together. Really helpful. Right. Well, thanks. Thanks. Have a good day. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.